start off with running in place. Just keep your feet moving, keep your hands up. Shuffle to one side, jab cross, and then the other side. Knees. That's recording. Keep your standing knee bent. Other side. Ladder steps. Kicks, front side back. Make sure you take turn your standing foot on the side kick. Okay. Two times more through that set. Running in place, punches, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Shuffle side to side with jab, cross, knees, ladder steps, and kicks. Two times more through, and then when you come back to me, we'll stretch. You reach up. And straight out to the front. for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Down in the side stretch. Both heels on the floor. If you need more stretch, take this elbow, push the knee further out. Turn. Make sure your foot is extended past your knee. Stretch your hip flexor, which is this. Straighten out your legs. Point your toes in the same direction. Knee straight, chin up, back flat. Stretch your hamstring. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees up. Other side, grab your ankle. Down in the side stretch.
turn, start your hip flexor. Straighten up your legs. Stretch your hamstring. <coughs> Have a seat, feet out, reach over to one side, grab your toes, reach over the top, keep your butt on the floor. Other side. And down to the center. Keep your toes up, keep your chin up, reach your elbows toward the floor. Pull your feet in, heels on the floor, rock back and forth. If you need a little bit more, put your elbows inside your knees, push them out. And then put your hands down and straighten out your legs. And up. Okay, so we're gonna do three ex three different exercises. You're I'm gonna show you each one one time through, and then after you've done them with me once through, you're gonna do them two more times. So the first one is legs here, feet are apart, toes are out at 45 degrees. Squat down. Keep your body where it is. Lift your heels up as high as they'll come, heels down and back up. Okay, that's the first one. Second one is dips. So you're gonna start here. If you can put your hands flat on the floor, um, your fingers should be facing your toes. Your elbows need to be straight. So I gotta get my hands off the floor because my elbows don't go straight. So what you can do is you're gonna dip. I'm bending my elbows. I'm not just dropping my butt, I bend my elbows, I kick, bend, kick. And then the last one that we're going to do, on your back, hands, make a diamond under your tailbone. Keep your chin tucked, so don't put your head on the floor behind you, and you're doing scissors. Okay, so two more times through each one of those. Squats, toes, dips with kicks, and scissors.
Okay, this month you are getting your stripe for intensity. And none of you are tiny tigers or little dragons, so intensity has nothing to do with a mean face or loud noises. You can be intense while you laugh at someone, while you carry on a conversation with them, or without making a sound at all. Okay, what has to be in the techniques for intensity is you gotta hit hard. Every move has to have martial intent. That means if you're doing it in the air as a drill or as a form, the person watching you has to be able to visualize what you're hitting because you are focused on a target. You're looking at that target, you're hitting the target, you're hitting it hard. So you're getting power through rotation, through backup mass, through anchoring. So you can see here all these concepts that get you your stripes every month, they all run together. So we're gonna do a few techniques. We're gonna start with a rising instep kick. Okay, we tend to call it, we call it a rising instep kick. <clears throat> Thinking that your instep is the top of your foot, your shoelaces. And if you're doing this with a partner on a pad, they're gonna put the pads in their hand or off our targets, and they're gonna stand like this to hold it because it's meant to be a groin kick. So if they hold like this, it's actually gonna become a groin kick. However, in actuality, if I'm wearing huge work boots, yes, I'm gonna kick with the top of my foot, but if I'm wearing sandals or sneakers, I'm not gonna hit with the top of my foot, I'm gonna hit with the base of my shin, right up into the groin, okay? So this kick, it comes, it chambers like a front kick, and then instead of pushing like a front kick would with the ball of your foot, it's gonna come up. The rotation is in the same place, it's not high, you're hitting the groin of someone who's the same height as you are. So it comes here. Okay, so you're gonna start in your fighting stance, hands are up, and you're gonna throw 10 on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then on the other side, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then we're gonna do another technique. Then we'll uh, put some techniques together. I forgot to start my watch. And then we'll add some targets. Okay, the next one that we're gonna work on is an ax kick. When you do an ax kick, ideally, you can get your foot up and you can drop it on the bridge of someone's nose or on their collarbone, okay? But if you can, there's not a lot of targets right here for an ax kick. So if you can't get your foot up that high, what you wanna think about is somebody standing here, focus on dropping that kick right on the front of their knee, okay? So it comes up like a front kick chamber. Then you're gonna take the knee, bring it across your body, bring it up, and open as you drop. Okay, you're hitting your target with your heel. Okay, like I said, pick your targets. Bridge of the nose, collarbone, top of the knee. Um, if someone is holding for you for this, um, I showed you how we would hold for the rising instep kick. When you're holding for an ax kick, you don't want to put the pad in your hand this way because when they hit hard, then your elbow gets hyperextended. You want to turn your hand like this and put the pad on the back of your hand. So if you have a focus pad, you put the pad on the back of your hand and put your fingers through and hold it this way, okay? If they're kicking low and you do this, you're gonna get kicked in the face. So if they can kick shoulder high, hold it up here. If they can't, take a knee and hold it here so that you're not putting your face as a target. Okay, so we're gonna do some of those on both sides. One. Two, three, four, five, and then the other side. Make sure if you're doing this on the floor that you don't slam your heel into the floor, it's going to hurt. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then we're gonna do one more technique this one can be, is going to be a back fist. So when you're doing a back fist, you're hitting with not these two knuckles, this surface of these two knuckles, but this surface of them. So it starts here and it comes out and across. You're hitting somebody 
in the temple or the side of the neck. If they're much taller than you, you can be getting them in the floating ribs. Okay, so you're going to start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, if your partner's holding a target for you for that, they're gonna hold here. Okay, if they hold here, that would be an appropriate target for a punch, but for the back fist, which comes out this way, they're gonna hold here, and you're gonna hit the back of your fist into their target. Okay, then I want you to take a couple of techniques and put them together. So I like that rising instep kick. So what I, we're going to do, let's see, we're going to do a rising instep kick, land forward and back fist. We're going to go on the assumption that you did the rising instep kick and it's going to step them back a little bit. You hit them in the groin, they step back a little bit, their head comes down, so your back fist is going to be a little bit downhill. Okay, so if somebody's offering you target for this, they're going to hold here and then here. Here and then here. Okay, so let's one, two, three, four, five. And other side. One, two, three, four. Five. Okay, and showing you the targets wasn't just theoretical. I want you to find somebody in your house and have them hold targets for you. If they don't take karate, show them the techniques, explain what you're going to be hitting, and show them how they need to hold the targets for you. Okay, so here at Tungsten no White Belt, you're working on basic form two this month, and we're going to work on high blocks. So when you do a high block, your hand comes all the way across your body. So what's going to happen? is the hand that's going to block. So if I'm going to block with my right hand, it's going to start on my left hip, palm up. The other hand is going to be on top of it, cup and saucer. Hand comes up. And as I set my stance, look at my hand, it turns over into the block. And this one turns over so it's chambered so I can punch. Okay, so your block is here. If it's here, it's not covering your head. If it's here, it's not covering your head. If it's like this and you get hit, you're going to break your wrist. So you need a straight line here. Okay, so we're going to do it first without the stance. I'm going to block with my right hand first. So it comes to my left hip, palm up, and block. Now, the transition to the next one is easier because the left hand is already palm up. It's going to come across. It's going to stay palm up. And this one's going to come down on top of it. And now the one that's on the bottom is going to block and they both turn over. So this one comes across, drop down on top of it, block. Stay, this one's palm up now, comes across, stays palm up, other one drops down, and block. Okay, so we're going to add that to a, to a traveling triple chassis. So I'm going to start in left triple chassis, left foot's forward, left high block. I'm going to pull my right foot into the left, as my right hand comes across my body, and I'm going to point my hips toward the corner. Drop my left hand down, step out through Soko Rikchasi, which is the toes out to the corner horse stance. Rotate on the heel of my back foot as I block. And the rotation is what gives you the power in the block. Okay, Because chances are that the person that you're defending against is stronger than your shoulder. But they're less likely to be stronger than the big muscles in your hips and butt. Okay, so as I do the next one. Back foot comes in as that hand comes across your body. Other hand drops down. Step out through the horse stance and block. Okay, and I'll do some facing the other way. Sometimes it's easier to follow in that direction. Okay, so right hand is down. Right foot is back. Right foot comes in. Right hand comes across. Drop the left one on the top. Now you notice I'm facing the corner now instead of straight on. So the rotation it was what drives the block. Because I think I'm calling it a block, but what I'm thinking about is taking this and catching somebody up under the chin. So I'm calling it a block, but I'm doing it, I'm thinking about a strike. Back foot steps in, hand comes across, other one drops down, step out and block. Okay, so I want you to do these going forward 
and going back. It's going to take a little bit of figuring out going back. That's your homework. Make sure you've got it by the time you come to class. So if you're a tungsten or white belt, that's what you practice. Actually, you can do all these drills. The, when we're doing forms, if we're actually doing a section of form, you're not doing past yours. But if we're doing a drill, you can do all of them. Okay, so the next drill that we're going to do is from King on Shodan, which is the form for tungsten or beginners, orange belts and blue belts. Okay, so we're going to start off with what we, we call a low block when we do it in form. But what I'm thinking about when I do this is not a low block so much as a hammer to the inside of someone's knee, either if they're standing here or if they're throwing a kick at me. Okay, so I'm going to step in, cross body chamber, hammer the inside of their leg, and then they're going to grab my hand. And I am going to pull their hand in. Two things could happen here. They could let go, at which point self-defense is over. I realize it's part of the form, but we're thinking self-defense. I pull it in, and then I back fist them in the side of the head. Now, a couple things you need to focus on when you do this pull in, and I'll show it to you in the other direction too. So I'm going to step and I'm going to block. When I pull in, I'm pulling my feet to this tiny little cat stance. So my left foot is facing forward. My right heel is on the inside of my left ankle. My toes are on the floor and my hands are chambered here with the right one on the inside. The rationale for this is, is it's going to be a strike so it's on the inside. If I was doing a block, it would be on the outside. But because I'm doing a strike, it's hidden and they can't see it, right? So it's on the outside and I'm going to back fist. Okay? So to do it, follow along with me, I'm going to step, hammer the side of their knee, right above the knee. They're going to grab my hand. I'm going to pull in, break their grip, back fist to the side of their head. Now, for those of you who don't know the form, it's going to be easy enough to do it on the other side. For those of you who know the form, it's going to screw with your brain because in the form, we only do it on one side. And I want you to do it on both sides. So you're going to look that way. You're going to step in. You're going to attack the side, inside of someone's leg. They're going to grab your hand. You're going to pull it away. Tiny little cat stance, hands on the inside, back fist to the side of the head. Okay, so I want you to do that and half a dozen times at least on each side. Okay, then we are going to do a phrase where I want you to think about where you're generating the power in each move. Okay, so we're going to start here and we're going to go in that direction and we are going to do low block, center block, punch, high block, punch, high block. Okay, what tends to happen when we do this is I get this. Okay, there's no chambers there and there's no rotation. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to chamber, step, rotate, do the low block, rotate my hips away. You can rotate your feet if you want to. I don't, I just rotate my hips. Chamber again, center block. Step in, I'm going to pull my shoulder back a little bit so I have a little bit of rotation in this punch. Rotate my hips away. Like I said, you can do your toes if you want to. I don't, I just bend my knees because that rotates my hips, which is the only thing that has to rotate. High block, punch, high block. Okay, so going away from you, it starts to rotate into the low block, rotate your hips away so you can bring them into this strike. And I'm calling it a block, but every one of them really is also a strike. Punch, hips away, high, punch, hips away, high. Okay, so I want you to do that going back and forth a bunch of times. And if you are a GUP, you're not going past these because I'm actually going to do bits of the forms, of the black belt forms. So row high, we finished here. So you're going to hop, you're going to get up and you're going to hop. So I got my right foot down, my right knee down, I'm my left foot up. I just not completely down, it's a close knee up. I'm going to hop back into a crane stance. Um, hands are here. My hip is straight to the front and the front of me is off to the side. I'm gonna step forward, center block, and then I'm not gonna step, punch, punch, step back, motion defense. Okay, so I came here, step back, step in block, Punch, punch, 
motion events. Now earlier in the form when you did this, you went block here, step, step into the block, step into the punches. In this phrase, you're not stepping into the punches. You're coming from here, back, I step into the first strike, I keep my feet where they are on the punches, and then the motion events. Okay, so that's first degree black belt. Second degree black belts are doing Pilsong. And we finished last month here. So we're gonna go off to that corner now. The first chalk punch I'm gonna do, I'm not stepping, I'm just shifting my weight. So I'm here and I'm just gonna shift my weight so that I come up and then turn into a chungle chassis there. So chalk punch, and then I'm gonna step, push, punch. Okay, next few counts are in a rear leaning stance. Index, low block. Look to the other direction, low block. Look again, center block. So this is all just shifting this rear leaning stance. It's not a cat stance, it's a long rear leaning stance. So we started here, one, two, three, four, Five. And again, one, and the form starts going forward. So this section of the form I'm facing backwards, but it's easier for you to learn following me, which makes sense when we're going backwards. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then if you are doing, if you are a fourth degree or higher, we're working on dragging on a rock. And last month we got to double to the U punch and the block low. Okay, I'm going to turn to the back, left foot indexes, chop, punch, two more punches, one, two. And then my left foot is just gonna drag, it's not gonna index. I'm gonna block low, reinforce block, or two hand block low, high block, and then rotate my hips an elbow, hand stays up. Then I'm gonna to turn to the back without moving my feet, no index, high block and chop. Okay, so going the other direction, I did the U punch, block low. Coming, turn, chop, punch, 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 horse stance, so I'm off at 45, block here, High block, still in the horse stance, rotate to chungle chassis as I elbow, and then rotate back to chungle chassis, high block and chop. Okay, we're gonna do two self-defenses, one from the beginner curriculum and one from the advanced curriculum. They might be a little bit hard to visualize without with me doing it in the air, but what I want you to remember is that every form that you do is a stylized self-defense, which means every self-defense you do can be done as a form. So I want you to think about these right now as little forms. Okay, we're gonna start off with Kata Gruma from a handshake. So somebody's shaking your hand, but they're not shaking their hand nicely. They're, sh they're squeezing your hand really hard. They're pulling you in like they want a punch. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is pull so they're off balance, punch them in the face, and then I'm going to turn and throw an elbow. Okay, in the self-defense, at this point, I would take them down and kneel and throw. So if we're doing this as a little form, that works very nicely. Okay, they're here, they're shaking my hand. They're not being nice about it. I'm gonna pull them off balance, punch, turn in, elbow. Okay, now I'm not moving my feet back. My feet are just staying right here, and I turn and take them down. Okay, if you wanna think about this as a form, Okay, so somebody starts here. Step back, punch. So I step back here. I'm gonna pull this back in again. Punch, turn, elbow, down. So it's really the same thing, but you can practice it in the air that way if you're thinking form. Okay, the other one that we're gonna do is somebody grabs your shoulder. Okay, so it, it kind of works as if they're doing it from the side but we're gonna go on the assumption <clears throat> that they're standing in front of you. So if you were in a karate kid's class, you would go trap, 
step back, wrap, punch. Okay, and what tends to happen is the kids go trap, step back, wrap, punch. There's a couple of problems with that. If you trap and then step back, you're gonna get hit in the head. Step back, trap is much more efficient. Okay, so somebody starting to punch is, is got my shoulder and the hand that's holding on, I don't have to worry about. I know where it is, it's not going, but the other hand could hit me. So I'm gonna step out of the way of that hand as I trap this one here. I'm gonna bring this hand to the front and up to the top and I'm not really gonna circle all the way around. I'm gonna get it to the top and then I'm gonna take my elbow and I'm gonna slam it down into their elbow. And I'm gonna come underneath so that my arm is right under their elbow and then I'm gonna punch that way, which is gonna dislocate their elbow and their shoulder. Self-defense over, okay? So we start here, they grab my shoulder. I get my head out of the way of their other hand, I trap. Comes up, drops down into their elbow, wraps under their elbow and punch. So the punch is here. It's not there with the other hand. The punch is actually, the self-defense is get your head out of the way. The violence is break their elbow, dislocate their shoulder. They attacked you, that's what they get. Okay, sticks, single stick. You guys know blood cup. We're gonna start the other hand this time. So for the few of you who are left-handed, this is, you're gonna be much happier this month and for the rest of you, you're gonna be very confused. Okay, so you're gonna put your stick in your right hand to start, hands all the way at the bottom. You're gonna swing it over to your left hand, grab it, make sure you have space at the bottom. Remember that so that you can use the other end as a weapon too. We start here, blood cup, courtesy, step back, cover your head. This hand is up to protect my face. In the case of an attack, it's to protect my face from the attack. In the case of doing this with a partner, it's to protect my face from my partner if they don't know what they're doing. Okay, I'm gonna step forward, I'm gonna strike high. So side of the temple, low knee, and back up to the face. So again, here, blood cup, courtesy, step back, cover my head. And you see my stick is covering my head. It goes dead, if it's down here, it's not covering my head. If it's like this, it's not covering my head. So you can see my head, it's here. It's downhill a little bit, so if their stick hits here, it slides down. Because if I do it this way and their stick hits here, it's gonna slide down and hit my head and that's gonna hurt. It's not as bad as getting hit in the head, but it's still not nice. So blood cup, courtesy, step back, cover your head. Step forward, high, so the side of the head. Knee, face. One more time, blood cup. Courtesy, I started too far back. Step back, cover your head. Step forward, strike high, low, high. Okay, so tongue should know if you're beginners, that's, you, that's as far as you're going. The rest of you guys get your other stick. And we're gonna do the bottom half. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you mirror and then I'll turn back to you. So you're gonna put the stick in your left hand outside your arm and the stick in your, okay. You're gonna put the stick in your right hand out here and the stick in your left hand here. And you're gonna hit down, one, two, three. And they're gonna come back here and you're gonna bring them back. One, two, three. Here and back. One, two, three to your left shoulder and back to your right. So from here, if you're following me, it's right, left, right. To the left shoulder, back to the right. Right, left, right. Left shoulder, back to the right. Right, left, right. Left shoulder, back to the right. So I would like you to practice this with somebody in your house. If there's nobody in your house who takes karate, then you need to teach it to them, which actually is a really good way for you to learn it. The best way to learn something is to teach someone else. I couldn't do my AK forms at all until I started teaching them. So then I had to think about what I was doing. Um, when you do this with somebody, make sure that you're going slow enough with enough control that nobody gets smacked in the head. Okay, uh, gup bow form. This is for green belts brown belts, red belts. Um, 
We're going to work on a technique today that's the beginning of the second part of the form. Okay, so we're going to do strikes across. Okay, so my bow is here. Right hand is palm up, left hand is palm down. I'm pulling it across my body. So if the bow was long, you'd see that it was here, almost tucked into my elbow. And then it comes out here to the other side. And if it was long, it would be almost tucked into my elbow. From this angle, it's not doing this. It's straight here and straight out. Straight, straight out. We're only, it only goes to the right. To do it the other way, you'd have to switch your hands. And in this form, we're not switching hands. It's only on the right side. Okay, so chamber, strike, chamber, strike, chamber, strike, chamber, strike. Okay, then we're gonna do some steps, and then we're gonna put it together in a way that sort of doesn't make sense at all. Okay, so I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna bring my knee up and step, up and step, up and step, up and step. Okay, so when I do this with the bow, the bow chambers when my foot is up, and the bow strikes when I'm stepping. Okay, so some of the steps are done in a cross stance, and some of them are done in a horse stance. Okay, so I'm going to start here in a neutral stance. I'll do this facing the other direction too. I chamber the bow, so back to my left side as my foot comes up, and then I settle my weight back up mass here. I'll come into cross stance as I strike. Then my knee comes up, the other knee comes up as I chamber, step out and strike. Knee comes up as I chamber, step out and strike. Knee comes up as I chamber, step out and strike. Okay, so when I'm coming towards you, if you look at my bow, it's not going in and out. It's staying tucked in close to my body and it's coming straight at you. Okay, if this is easier for you to learn, with following along with me. I start here. I chamber. I'm not looking at the chamber. I'm looking at the person that I'm going to be attacking. So as I chamber though, my foot comes up. I step into the cross stance, drop my weight into it so there's back up mass here for the strike, and I step. Bring my foot up again. Chamber the bow. Step into horse stance and strike. Chamber as the knee comes up. Strike as the knee comes as you step down, chamber as the knee comes up, strike as the knee comes down. If this is new for you, you might have to rewind this part of the video and do it a dozen times. That's fine. Because this is the next phrase of the form comes here. Okay, so you guys need to practice that. Okay, black belt bow form. All the black belts, AK black belts and tungsten black belts. Okay, we're gonna go back to the beginning because the new piece that we're adding is the same as the previous phrase, but going in the other direction. So we started here, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, then we went to our left, to a rear leaning stance with the block, chingle chassis strike, figure eight as your foot comes in, step back out and strike. Now, I'm gonna flip the bow over, but I'm not switching my hands. I'm gonna take the back end of the bow, flip it up, bring it over, but I still have my hands in the same orientation when I'm done. So I don't know why we flipped it there, except somebody decided it looked cool in the form. No index. So I was here, I flipped the bow over, and I just shift my weight and I block, step out and strike, Step in, figure eight, step to the horse dance and stab again. Okay, so from the beginning, facing the other direction, it's easier for you to follow me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, Three. It's the same, like the basic bow form, you don't switch hands. It's the same hands doing it, same hand position in both sides. 